Another day, more drama on Parliament Hill. Ottawa is laser-like focused on one issue right now, the rising cost of living. Here's new Tory leader Pierre Polyev and Deputy Prime Minister Christopher Freeland going toe-to-toe -to -toe over how to tackle the crisis. The Liberals would have Canadians believe that they've never had it so good. Well, I guess if you're jetting around the world singing songs in a beautiful lobby, then that might be true. A Canadian struggling today to make ends meet, the last thing you're going to want to do is trust these highly irresponsible Conservatives. If you are the 30-year-old stuck living in your parents' basements because the Liberals have doubled housing prices, if you can't fill up your tank with the gas, if you're among the four and five families that have cut their diets because they can't afford food, and the last thing you would want is a tax hike on your paycheck and on your energy use. Will the Liberals therefore cancel those tax hikes? Just this spring, their new leader described crypto as, quote, a way to opt out of inflation. That's irresponsible, and Canadians are smart enough to know it. Okay, let's bring in MPs, members of Parliament, to debate what the best approach to tackle inflation is. Joining me now, Ontario Liberal MP Francesco Sobera, Ontario Conservative MP Michael Barrett, and NDP House Leader Peter Julian. Hi, everybody. Good to have you in studio. I want to mark for the audience, and for, this is probably the first time in three years that we've had a full panel uh, of MPs represented, so I appreciate you all coming into the studio for that. It's great to have you back. Uh, Mr. Sobera, I'll start with you. I if the Bank of Canada actually ends up triggering a recession because it had to raise interest rates as aggressively as it has been uh, in order to curb inflation. What level of responsibility does your government bear for increasing demand through excessive stimulus spending? Thank you, Vashi, for that question. It's great to be here with my colleagues. Um, first off, the plan we've put forward this week in Parliament, the legislation we've introduced, uh, as an economist, as a member of Parliament, I would say two things. It's reasonable and it's affordable. And it targets those Canadians that are being impacted the most, people on fixed incomes, uh, working, working families. Uh, it's targeting them with measures including uh, doubling the GST tax credit for the next six months, helping approximately 12 million Canadians, a one-time top-up of $500 for 1.8 million Canadians that are renters and faced with increased price pressures, and introducing a Canada-wide dental care plan, first for those under 12 years old, providing real relief to families, providing real relief to seniors, including many in my riding. It's great to see. We need support from the opposition to get this uh, legislation passed, so by the end of the year, millions of Canadians will be provided relief from our government Face, uh, that are facing the cost of living issues that you've talked about. And, and I take that point, but with respect, it doesn't answer the initial question, which is not necessarily around this targeted spending. And you're right, there are Canadians who are greatly suffering right now because of the rising cost of living. But your government's role overall in adding inflationary pressure, I know a lot of it is outside of your control and outside of the control of Canadians. But when your government put a ceiling, for example, on temporary targeted spending during the pandemic of $100 billion, actually meeting the, your own definition of what's temporary was less than half of that spending. It was it was more long-term protracted spending that economists have said, yes, did contribute to some degree to inflation. Does your government bear some responsibility for that? What I would say is the primary determinant of the, the global inflation crisis that all countries are seeing across the world is the COVID pandemic supply chain and then the war in the Ukraine. Uh, our government Does that responded. abdicate your, your government? No, no not at all. Our government's responsibility was to assist Canadians through the pandemic it was to assist Canadians now facing the price pressures that we are seeing. And with that, it is what I would say reasonable and uh, reasonable, responsible leadership to help Canadians facing a cost of living issues that we've talked about and that my own family faces every day. Uh, that is the primary determinant and the primary goal is to assist Canadians with these increased price pressures. We are doing that. It's responsible leadership. It's affordable. It's not going to add to any inflationary pressures. As an economist, it I truly believe that. I would disagree with uh, my colleague, Mr. Barrett, on that. It will not add to any okay, inflationary we'll, pressures. We'll circle back on that because, Mr. Barrett, I want to I ask you about what your party is proposing and what we heard the new leader of your party talk about in question period today, which is uh, characterized as not increasing payroll taxes. What you're in, in effect talking about is EI and CPP. CPP uh, rate hikes are a product of a discussion with province who wanted retirees to be better covered. EI was depleted during the pandemic because people needed it so much. So that rate hike is to bring things back into balance. Do you really think, uh, you know, the best way to tackle the problem right now is to kind of deplete what retirees and people who aren't employed have access to? Uh, I think that it's critical that at a time when Canadians are facing a cost of living crisis, 
uh, an inflationary crisis, the likes of which you know I haven't seen in my lifetime. Um, it's been uh, you know 40 years since we've seen this kind of food price inflation. Um, people are making incredibly tough decisions. Their dollar is not going as far as it should because of the inflationary um, practices of this government uh, and raising taxes is it's not the right time to raise taxes. It's not the right time to introduce new taxes. And so be it the paycheck tax in January or the increases to the carbon tax, now it's irresponsible for the government to take more off of Canadians' paychecks. And so if it, if it looks like a tax and it sounds like a tax and Canadians are taking less home at the end of the month, you know, it's a tax. But, okay, two things on that. First of all, it's not accurate completely to say that this inflation is entirely due to the government. The government played a role. There are a lot of other things that played a role, too. But second of all, and more specifically to your point about a tax is a, 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 tax, is a tax, it's it's not really in this case. I mean, we're talking about EI. And are they CPP. taking less are home you, at the end of the month? But are you saying to are you saying to the provinces they were wrong to make to hope for retirees to have unless better the coverage? Unless the government's prepared to tell Canadians that uh, they've spent the cupboard bare from those accounts, now is not the right time for them to increase taxes on Canadians. It's not the right time to increase the carbon tax either. And they're, they're, they just keep going back to Canadians. And some of the spending that, that they're proposing right now, including with their uh, so-called rental assistance or, their, um, or their, their dental checks, it's not a dental plan, these are, these are checks that they're sending out, um, these are going to add to inflation. They're, they're giving with the right hand and taking with the left hand because but, the spending power of Canadians is diminished. But are you saying that people don't need diminished. help with rent? They don't need help with unemployment? They don't the, need help with retirement? Of course, I mean, of those course, are, those of are course Canadians are hurting terribly. So Cana Canadians are hurting terribly. And, and our plan is that the government, your government, should stop introducing new spending, should stop raising taxes on Canadians, and should take a look at the, the real pain that Canadians are facing every day because these measures that, that, that have been introduced um, are, are, are not the right ones. We'll, right. we'll circle back, I promise. I just want to bring Mr. Julian into the conversation because your party is very focused, I noticed in the House of Commons today, on what it's now calling greedflation. And, and particularly asking the government to zero in more on the role of corporations and, and hike taxes there. I looked through the agreement, though, that you signed uh, months ago back in May. Is that right? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, months ago with the, uh, with, the, with the Liberals to keep them in power. And you don't have anything in there when it comes to a fairer tax system about that. So inflation at that point was at 6.7%. You could have stipulated this be part of that agreement, and you didn't. Why not? There are many parts of the agreement that we continue to push, and, and the reality is, despite the fact that Liberals don't give credit, uh, the two bills that were introduced this week that fight inflation are both NDP bills. The dental plan is the NDP that brought that about. The issue of the housing credit for renters, that's the NDP. And the GST credit is something that Jagmeet Singh has been pushing for. It wasn't in the agreement either, but we pushed successfully for. And the two bills today, NDP 1 and NDP 2, that we're debating this week, are a result of NDP action. I, I do want to circle back on the Conservatives because they have no credibility when it comes to pensions. When they talk about CPP, we saw under Pierre Polyev when he was part of the Stephen Harper government that they gutted, they stripped away pensions from 65-year-olds and 66-year-olds. For, for the Conservatives to say that they have a concern for people, uh, it simply doesn't wash with their record but the, but as the government. But the point That's about, uh, but the point about, and I'll get, I'll get everyone to wait in, but the point about the fact that uh, for example, uh, hiking taxes in this environment maybe isn't the right time to do it. Isn't there a point to that? I mean, Canadians are hurting. Uh, we, we believe that we need to make sure Canadians get what they can actually uh, use to put food on the table, keep a roof over their head. And what we fought for uh, this week are things that will have a real impact on it Canadian will help, families. It will impact inflation too, though. Uh, well, we also believe that the government should be taking action on greedflation, as you pointed out. I mean, the, the profits of the food companies are far beyond the inflation costs. So what is what is at work here when you've got liberals and conservatives that allow that kind of greedflation to take place you're, you're without any... Without any sort of action. And so we believe that Canadians need to be helped, and at the same time, we need to be stepping up when we see companies making record profits. It is not the time it, when pe Canadians are struggling to do that. My point is those profits were being made during the pandemic, and it could have been something in the agreement, and it wasn't, but, but we'll get back to and that. And you're their partner in creating that inflation. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Sabera. Uh, thank you, Vashi. Uh, look, the, the, the fact of the matter is we have an opposition leader now under Mr. Polyev uh, with the Conservatives who told Canadians to invest in Bitcoin. If Canadians would have followed the opposition leader's advice, they would have lost half their value. We have an opposition leader who attacks 
the credibility of the institutions of Canada, including the Bank of Canada. He, he attacked the independence. He attacked the. Isn't the, it a fair question to ask, though? Maybe not in the way he did, but isn't it a fair question to ask that the Bank of Canada lagged in its response and how aggressive it was in tackling inflation? I mean, other central banks have made that admission. Well, I think what I would say for the Bank of Canada, obviously, I'm not going to comment on any actions that they've, they've, they've taken. They're an independent institution, and that would be, be highly irresponsible for me to, to, to they comment on. They even ask the question? They no, failed to meet their I, I inflation target. The, the inflation, the, the, the mandate of the Bank of Canada is a mandate that was renewed in January. We uh, hold in high esteem the independence of the Bank of Canada. All central banks are dealing with inflation that is led primarily, I would say, by uh, global factors, including here in Canada, and that's impacted Canadians, uh, as we know. Uh, the independence of the Bank of Canada is obviously something I'm not going to comment on. I think the Bank of Canada has taken the, ac the prudent actions to bring inflation under control, uh, and, and that's why I'll, I'll comment on that. What I'd like to say about uh, uh, the, the Conservatives, we don't see any solutions that they're offering. We have a plan. We've, we've signed a national... Stop spending, cut we, taxes. No, we, we, uh, Mr. Mr. Baird, the Canada Pension Plan is a plan that depend, uh, the retirees of Canada depend on month after month. We came to an, an agreement with all provinces and territories on a CPP enhancement, including a number of Conservative premiers. And that agreement is flowing through so Canadians can have a secure and dignified retirement. Only Conservatives would attack the Canada Pension Plan and there's, the retirees no, that will the, benefit for generations to come. There's, there's, absolutely, there's absolutely no attack on anything except this government's um, continued pickpocketing of Canadians at a time when they absolutely cannot afford it. And you take a look at, you know, having an agreement with the provinces. None of the provinces have asked for uh, the federal government, for this Liberal government, to step out of their lane into provincial jurisdiction and spend $9 billion on, a, on an area, health care, dental care, that's squarely that's within the jurisdiction. That's true, but they, they did make agreements jurisdiction. on CPP. They so, did come so, so, you're, so, right about the, so, you're right about dental so if, care, but so you're if, not so on CPP. So if, we're, so if we're prepared if we're prepared to collaborate with the provinces on one, where is it on the other? But the, uh, the, double, bottom, the, the yes. double bottom line here is that you want to talk about a plan? Stop raising taxes on Canadians. And when we have the NDP um, supporting, they're, they're, they're the partners in crime on this pickpocketing of Canadians. They're, they've contributed to this inflation. Uh, the inflationary pressures that Canadians are facing, uh, it's, it's time to, to actually address okay, let's get Mr. actually Julian. address Canadian spending Let's power. get Mr. Julian yeah. in because I'm but running out of time. This is crazy. I mean, this is what Pierre Polyev has brought to the Conservative Party. What we, we see is that Lower being taxes. opposed to, to dental care, being opposed to having a rental supplement, being opposed to a GST rebate that gives hundreds of dollars back to Canadians, 12 million Canadians. At the same time, they're saying, let's not protect CPP, let's not protect pensions, let's not protect employment insurance. This is, this is unbelievable that you have a Conservative Party that is trying to give two different messages that are completely contradictory. No, we, and Pierre Polyev, Pierre Polyev has to actually put into place policies that make sense. He can, he can talk about inflation in question is period, it, but he actually needs to put forward Is it fair, though, to ask some, questions about the, the measures that you're talking? I mean, there's two ways to look at it, right? Is it actually going to help Canadians, what was announced, and is it too late to actually make a difference? And also, is there the possibility that any additional spending at this point, and so would tax cuts, by the way, increases demand and therefore has an, you know, adds to inflationary pressure? Aren't those questions fair to ask? I, I think a question that's fair to ask is, what about workers' wages? Uh, we have increased profits from the food companies. We've actually seen wages uh, for workers not keep up with inflation. Those are the kinds of things that would actually make a difference in Canadians' lives. And I, I don't see the Conservatives bring anything positive at all. And the Liberals only act when the NDP pushes them. And we're grateful to see the two bills that the NDP forced to the the, on the floor of the House of Commons this week, it will make a difference for Canadians. And Jagmeet Singh's leadership has made a difference. For I folks. feel like we could have a whole discussion about the word force and whether it's appropriate, but unfortunately I'm out of time, so I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, all three of you, for your time, Francesco Severo, Michael Barrett, and Peter Julian.